again for a discussion of the Batman. So, Will, are you excited to talk about the Batman? Yeah, no, I just saw it. Uh, Wednesday, right? Week. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're lucky. I was supposed to see it again today after the podcast, and then I had to reschedule it with a friend. <laughs> and now I have to wait another week. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm like, oh my god, when I saw it the first time, it was amazing. Oh my god. Um, anyway, um, let's uh, kind of, um, were you excited for this film? I mean, I was excited, I mean, for this film. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was, I, you know, like, I'm not as big of a Batman fan as you are. Um, oh. So <laughs> I was, like, I like uh, Batman. Oh, that's, but I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> yes um, um yeah but I, I was like I, I didn't necessarily want another batman movie but everything oh. i heard about this movie i was like this seems like a good take on it so i'm i'm interested mm. uh it's and, um yeah yeah um it's interesting yeah. you're saying that like a lot of people say that but in reality you're gonna like the film anyway <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I don't know. It it was a good take on Batman, so I was interested in seeing it. But if it was another like, I don't, I, I might not have seen the movie if it was the Ben Affleck version. Oh, oh wow. Um, I I think you you were definitely going to see the Ben Affleck film because that film now with the leaks and um information about that film i think you kind of like that film because it was going to be like deathstroke versus like batman and then yeah, it, i it, if the reviews were good i might have checked it out but mm, yeah yeah that's Destro. um but i i i, I mean ben affleck was going to direct it and i 100 think ben affleck can pull it off but unfortunately it just didn't happen for obvious obviously reasons you know so, um, but yeah, so after, you know, Ben Affleck stepped down, you know, we, we got Matt Reeves, uh, you know, taking over this project. And do you seen his other films? Um, uh, Matt um, Reeves. What has he done? Um, he film? done, Clov- uh, he did the first Cloverfield film. Okay. He did the remake of Let Me In. Um, and then he did, of course, the, the, the last two Planet of the Apes films with Annie Circus. So okay. that's why he's in this film, because he's doing yeah. this as a favor for yeah. that reason. Okay. I, I, I just watched Cloverfield uh, last October. Oh. So that was the only one of those that I'd seen. Oh, wow. I, I think I've seen his three films, um, Let Me In and the two Apes films. Mm. Um, great films. Um, I think Matt Reese is a very consistent director. Way better than J.J. Ammons, in my opinion. Um, uh, I was very excited for him to take over this project. And why right away, he was the right project uh, director. Because, you know, when he started to talk about, like, he's, he was making a detective film, I was like, yes, finally, a detective story film for Batman. After so many years not doing it, it was just so relief that he was going to do that as his film. And, uh, you know, jumping in, um, what was your overall thoughts of the film after seeing it Wednesday? Um, yeah, um, I really liked this take on Batman. I liked the mm-hmm. movie, like, used his detective skills more. Um, I liked the Riddler and Penguin and uh, Commissioner yeah. Gordon. Catwoman. Uh, Catwoman, yeah. <laughs> um, I, the movie was way too long. Oh, really? I didn't have yeah. that problem. I mean, I mean, I, like, I it was it was paced very well, but I there was definitely a lot of stuff that could have been cut out or just trimmed. Mm-hmm. Even just like things that went on too long like the one that sticks out in my mind because it was the last example of this is when batwoman or sorry batman and catwoman <laughs> are, um, <laughs> batwoman. <laughs> are oh my God. Um, like riding away on their motorcycle wow my sorry my allergies are making my throat all uh 
Oh my god. <laughs> um, when they're like leaving on their motorcycles. Yes. Uh, that could have been like three shots, and instead it was like ten, and it lasted a whole minute. <laughs> like just just trim some of that, you know? Yeah. Um, oh man. Like there was a lot of stuff like that where like. Mm. Things could have just been a little cleaner, and then it wouldn't have been three hours long. Yeah, um, I agree. Um, it was very awkward. I just thought, just put the bat symbol, and then that's it. Like, I, uh, yeah, the the minus the motorcycle thing was was too long, and I I get yes, he's gonna miss Catwoman, and you know. Yeah, but uh, like you could have had them. Getting on their motorcycles, them driving next to each other, mm-hmm. then them parting ways, and then him looking in the rearview mirror. That's four shots, and it would take like maybe ten seconds. Yeah, and instead, uh, it was like twenty minutes or like I don't know how long. Felt like that? forever, forever. <laughs> there were like there were so many shots of them like driving through an entire forest on their motorcycles together. Yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah, they were, they were in a cemetery, which is weird. Um, but I mean, I mean, it's Batman, so it's, yeah. it's supposed to be gothic. So, um, yeah, I, I can, yeah, I mean, yeah, the movie is too long, but I, I, I guess I wasn't bothered by it because I was so engaged with the characters and the story. Um, yeah, I, I think the ending should have been something more climactic, like the '89 film, like. I think you should have done was like okay, you see the the motorcycles separate, and then you maybe do like a like a scene where it's it's, it's like going up to see the you know Gotham City, and then you see mm-hmm. the bat symbol like turn on, and then that's how you close out your film. I feel like we need I, I wanted that instead of the way we got it here, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, uh, let me go into my thoughts um i think it's one of the best batman films uh mm-hmm. it's my third favorite after the lego movie and of course the dark knight um let's be honest here no one is going to beat the dark knight in the ranking i mean that's impossible mm-hmm. um i liked it more than the dark knight what i, I mean i mean yeah i i, I mean i, mean, I, 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 I okay no one can beat Heath Ledger as the Joker. Yeah. But, like... I don't know. The other parts of The Dark Knight, I've never felt, like... I don't know. They're not my favorite? Yeah, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so, like... Yeah, I think I liked this as, like, a cohesive piece more than I liked The Dark Knight. Okay. But, like, yeah, nothing's gonna touch Heath Ledger's Joker. No, no. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I guess we can get into rankings. So this is your number one film, right? I, I mean, Lego Batman might be number one, but oh, okay. Um, yeah, that one is just so good. Yeah, focusing on Batman. Um, I like, I liked it because they did the Bat Family, and it's mm-hmm. like I really want that in a live action film. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I liked that they like leaned into the goofy aspects of Batman for the Lego Batman movie. Mm, yes. I, I think there's two mm. ways to do Batman well. There's the dark. really goofy, like, like you lean into the fact that he names everything after, like, it's like Bat whatever, like Bat Copter, <laughs> Batmobile, <laughs> and he fights people like Condiment King. Oh my god! The uh, or you do like super dark, super serious detective, like neo noir thing, like this movie did. Um, oh my god! And like those are the two ways I like Batman, and anything that tries to like be a little bit of both really falls flat for me. Yeah, like uh, the Joel Schumacher films, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, which I, uh, you know, I don't hate the the drill shirt marker films as other people but i i think that's where you go down really badly with a batman film you know mm-hmm. especially batman Robin, but 
anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I, I totally, no, no, I think you had a very good valid on Batman, and I totally understand what you're saying for the Lego Batman movie being number one. I totally agree with that. Um, it's always, I, I mean, I totally, like, I mean, Dark Knight is not my favorite superhero film, but it's one of my favorite Batman films. Yeah, um, and it's the, very good. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. Um, yeah, I mean, the Nolan films are, like, top-tier Batman films. Like, I mean, everyone was going to put Batman Begins as number one because it's the most centric Batman film, you know, to date, you know, before this film and whatever animation film uh, you've seen as maybe centric Batman film, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I totally love your list there, Will. Um, I totally respect that, and I think that's good because, you know, because... I mean, it's it's tough to be a Batman film. It's like you have to have these thing to make it as number one or number three mm-hmm. for me. And I think that's the thing. And the thing I like about this movie is it really deep, like it goes deep to what who is Batman and like what he should be, you know. Mm-hmm. And I really like that because he realized that he he needs to be more than vengeance. And I really like to discuss that in a Batman film. Finally, mm-hmm. like. You know, like, yeah, I am Vengeance, you know, is a line from you know, Aminu's series, but I always was bothered by that line. And then here, I like how psychologically and then in depth we talk about it and like him realizing that that's not who should be going to the path, you know? Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed that. Um, uh, the, the kid holding. You know, Batman's hand like got to me just you know seeing the the mayor's kid um fortunately his father you know got killed by the Riddler in the beginning um it, it was just such a great touching scene and then like everyone followed Batman in the you know the, the water it was just oh so good um yeah I I really enjoyed this film and I think Robert Pattinson was the great Batman one mm-hmm. of the best yeah I I think um um, I, I, what's your opinion on Robert, uh, Robert Pattinson as Batman? I he was perfect as Batman. Um, yeah, like really intimidating, really like like the like jawline fit the cowl really well too. Yeah, um, he's, he's looked great. Like yeah, he he looked exactly like what I would picture Batman being. Yeah, because Bruce Wayne was like a little too. Emo. moody for me yeah <laughs> um, um like i want that to be like who bruce wayne like really is but i feel like he should and like maybe this will come in sequel since this is still like a relatively new yeah. batman he's like two years in right yes this um, is year two batman so I, yeah i want him to like understand that he needs to keep up the like billionaire appearance yeah um i i I, I think it was kind of cool to see that because it's like, you know, we never t- took time to see Bruce because this is from Earth One Batman, where, or, you know, the, the Scott Snyder serial, serial year Batman, where, you know, he wants to be Batman every time. And so, like, the Bruce Wayne persona gets kind of like sidelined, mm-hmm. which I love that we did that in this film. Um, and I think it was a very, really, interesting take on Bruce Wayne and Batman and like this had like so much like a vampire vibe which I love mm-hmm. and, and and you know not you know not because Ferguson was in Twilight folks uh but you know uh it was it, it was very intriguing to see you know Bruce Wayne being like this like vampire like he had to put glasses on to you know block the sun that was like hitting him which was a neat touch and uh, yeah, I, I I wasn't bothered by that. Um, the one thing that did bother me was the Afrin thing. Like, like mm. I think this is the less screen time for Afrin, uh, like Afrin slash Bruce Wayne relationship. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, it's not like a requirement to focus on it, like how Nolan did it. But I I don't know. Like, it, I I want a more anti circus um, in this film. Cause... Yeah, I at least wanted like we don't see him after he's like he like wakes up in the hospital, right? No, no. I wanted like... like like in the end 
not that we needed to add more to the three hour movie <laughs> but if you cut the stuff that needed to be cut you could have yeah added like a scene where they like were together again yeah just to give some more closure to that yeah um yeah um that was weird um i mean uh, that last scene was was a great touchy scene i did like his line like, yeah it was a really good scene i like i I did like the chemistry that they had. Yeah, they did have scenes together. Yeah, I I really did that, and I like how he like participate with the detective stuff, mm-hmm. and like him yeah. like coding the ciphers and, mm-hmm. and like like that, that was very cool, and I really yeah. appreciate that. Um, and, and speaking of Earth One, him walking with a cane that was from the Earth One graphic novel that I was okay. mentioning. So, um, like. Um, here it was very unclear because in there in the comics, he did lose like a leg in that version. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of curious if we're going to touch up on upon that or just just saying that he just had like a like a like a house like problem with his leg, and so he's working with a cane, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. So, um, but yeah, um, but I mean, the person that got more to do was, I mean. I mean, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Gordon, played by Jeffrey Wright, was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, he was definitely the comedic relief. Um, I, 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 I'm just, I think Jeffrey Wright was the perfect Commissioner Gordon. Mm-hmm. Nothing is going to be uh, Gary Ullman's Commissioner Gordon. That's just, 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 just the fact for me. Um, um, he really looks the part. <laughs> yes, I mean, and I love him in Dark Knight. That's like another reason, like, just, yeah. just like. His role there is just so powerful, like especially the family getting taken by Two Face, and it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> um, but man, I was so happy to see Commissioner Gordon getting more to do here. I was so happy he had like he was a partner with Batman, like he was the was the Watson to Batman, which is mm-hmm. great. Yeah. And oh my god, just uh, I, I mean. Just uh, the 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 lines, the funny lines he gets is it gets to me and it's so funny. Um, uh, like um, <laughs> he, uh, it was I'm trying to figure out what line he'd say was kind of funny. Like uh, what was it? Oh, uh, he couldn't p- punch me harder when Bammy had to punch him in the police station. Mm-hmm. And like he said, like you couldn't pull your punches. <laughs> Uh, harder <laughs> as he didn't, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that was funny. Or then, or like, um, they found the cars for the mayor, and he's like, "Oh man, this is this is what you do as a mayor. I should be going to there uh, as the mayor, getting these cars." <laughs> that was funny. Um, but what was your favorite funny scene with Gordon? Um, Will? Um, it was probably that scene. Like, you could have pulled your punches. I did. Oh my God. Exchange. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god, that was funny. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate, you know, Gordon getting to more of the plot, which is great, mm-hmm. because uh, sometimes we forget Gordon is a important character in the in the Batman universe, mm-hmm. like Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher did, but whatever, so. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so um, I think Jeffrey Wright was great, and I'm very excited to see him more in the sequels. Um, and then the villains. I I think all three villains here, Catwoman, the Riddler, Penguin, were great. Yeah. Um, I mean... I'll call I, them too. Oh, yes. And, and of course, the Mafia um, say mm-hmm. they're, they're great here as well. And um, um, it was great that they didn't ignore the Mafia because I was kind of worried if, because, you know, Dark Knight Trilogy did that, you know, extensively, but thank God they didn't do that because the mafia family is always a point in the Batman films uh, or mm-hmm. uh, universe in general. So um, my favorite was the Penguin, and then you say the Riddler was your favorite. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, um, yeah, I love the Riddler here. I think I it's tough for me to say he's my favorite Riddler version mm-hmm. because I love Frank Dorshin. And um, and then the Arkham games is great mm-hmm. too. Um, 
I, I, I don't know. Like, how you rank Paul Daniels, like, Riddler? Like, is he your personal favorite, or, like, is he, like, third or second? Word? Like, how you rank him? Uh, I don't know if I have a ranking. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, w- I didn't like his costume, really. Oh, okay. Like, um, it was all right. I just... Yeah. I mean... It, I, it didn't stand out. Yeah. Um... It didn't bother me because they, they kept the colors, which I was very happy about. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it, it worked for the movie. It just, yeah. Um, um, but I really liked... I don't know, he was just really scary. And, like, he, he really wasn't for most of the movie. But then mm-hmm. when, like, you got to the end and, like... There were there were a few moments that like really made me terrified. Oh man! The first one was um when he's FaceTiming uh, Batman and the DA in the scene with the bomb. Yes. And oh the DA God. tries to talk, and he like flips from being his like persona to just like shouting. Yes. At the top of his lungs, that was like, oh man, this guy's. On range, yeah, yeah. The range. Oh my god! Um, and then uh, the part that like scared me the most, I think, was when uh, Batman unlocks that last video where he, uh, Riddler's addressing his like followers, and he doesn't have the voice modulator. He's just yes. like talking, and he's super like confident, and they're all planning a terrorist attack together. I was like, oh, this feels realistic in a way that's <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i yeah it's yeah. so oh my god like i i can't believe they actually did that and and just in a movie that was supposed to be a blockbuster yeah it's so oh my god yeah that hit home. yeah 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 oh my god oh my god um the the two things that scare me um, the second one, it's more like I was so happy we got the Riddlers, like the Riddler clues, right? And mm-hmm. when he was giving the DA, of course, played by Pierre uh, Skyscar, mm-hmm. I love how he was he was challenging him uh, of a game of three Riddles, and he got it right. Mm-hmm. And that scene was my favorite. And then yeah. before he exploded, like that was my favorite scene with the Riddler. Mm-hmm. And then the opening. Um, where you you didn't you didn't know if the like you didn't know that that the Riddler was watching the mayor, mm-hmm. and and then of course the mayor was watching something you know with the election and with the the mayor, the new mayor that's campaigning, and yeah. then it, it was like a horror film like he was in the background like it was like yeah. a eight twenty four level, <laughs> I was like what <laughs> he's there and like, and then when he attacked him it was so brutal and it's like oh my god. Like him smashing his head, and and then you know, and then after you know, the the murder, like he starts taping, you know, the the head, and then and then before writing no more lies, is mm-hmm. oh my god, that scene really got to me. I was like, oh wow, we're, yeah. we're going that far with this ruler version. Um, uh, I think those two scenes were my favorite, like scary moments of the ruler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, the costume, I I think I, I'm going to expect different looks and versions of the Riddler. Um, I I mean, the Riddler has so much design over the years. Like, mm-hmm. and, you know, this one, it didn't bother me because at least they get the, the core components. Like, okay, question mark, green. That's it. Mm-hmm. So at least they did that because Do I... Do you have question marks on the costume? Um, yes, so it, it's not like maybe it was too dark. <laughs> yeah, the question mark wasn't like what? Where? Where is it? Is it? It was in like the bottom of the the coat. I was on the jacket. Yeah, on, or yeah, on the jacket. Sorry, um, in the jacket on the left side. So oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So um, like it, it was kind of like the like yeah, Batman with the crosshairs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, having the question mark on there helps a little bit. Yeah. So, 
um, at least they got it right. I mean, um, I, I appreciate he was the Riddler because this is something I don't like from Batman Forever. Like, he's more like Mad Hatter than the Riddler. Mm. You know, and the, the clues, like the Riddler clues were just not engaging like this film was. I, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, I really liked the the clues in this one. Yeah, it, it, it just, I, I, there was a moment I was like really worried that they were gonna be like too easy, like in the first yeah, one. Um, yeah, and he was like, um, what was like, what what does a liar do um, after oh, he dies or he whatever? Dies. And like, I got it pretty quickly i was like he, he lies still uh he lies, and yeah, i was yeah. like if they if they like play this out for 20 minutes and like no one can get it i'm, I'm in for a long three hours and then like <laughs> two seconds after i got it batman was like he lies still and i was like oh thank god yeah <laughs> they're, oh. they're gonna like handle it appropriately <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's a tricky just like maneuver of like how you want your clues, the, the real clues to be engaging mm-hmm. and then not to be too obvious, right? Right. And I, I'm surprised they, they completely nailed that in this film. Mm-hmm. And it's just no. Um um I uh, let's get into um uh, we're we're you know off camera we were discussing the Wayne family and mm-hmm. you know you were asking if they're gonna show the the you know the murder of the Waynes again, you know, yeah. which I'm I mean, I don't care. I'm fine. I mean, it's a Batman thing. Um, oh, it's, I've seen it too many times. Oh, I mean, it, it's three times, but it's like from two right. years or three years. Like, Batman v Superman came out in 2016, and then Joker came out in 2019. That's like three years. It's like, that's, yeah, that's too soon. <laughs> no, how did we yeah, too soon? Yeah, and also, uh, I, don't know, I watched uh, the animated adaptation of The Long Halloween. Oh, <laughs> showed it in that. Well, yeah, because this, I mean, it was in the graphic novel. <laughs> I okay, you book. don't. Uh, I just, I'm tired of seeing the same shot of the pearl necklace breaking off in slow motion while they yes. get shot in an alley. Like it's yes, that's I'm tired true. of it. You just reference that it happens. Like we all know already. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, or just do a sound fake. Like um, in the cartoon show, the Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the third episode, Bane, like, we got a shot of Bruce Wayne, like, him being young. He was in, like, the police station waiting for Afrin to pick him up. And he has the pearls. And the cool thing that they did was he was dropping the pearls down, like, like, uh, like a domino, like a domino effect. Mm-hmm. And, like, it, when he drops the one pearl down, it was like a gunshot sound. Like, it, they could do that as well, like creatively, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so they didn't do it in this film, which was great. Um. I mean, I think Matt Rees understand the complaint. <laughs> Everyone been complaining about that. Um. <clears throat> um. What do you think about the uh, family? You know, reveal and you know the corruption. Um. Did you like that? And um. Did you think it? went forward that the filmmakers think they did like they did yeah I, okay i liked it okay um i think we were talking um outside of the recording that um it reminded me of the kennedys yes uh, uh yeah hiding certain family members illnesses um and like mental illnesses yeah um, um I'm so I, I thought that Made yeah. sense. Um, mm, okay. I thought the the explanation that Alfred gives for the corruption made sense of like Thomas wanting to protect Martha um, yeah. from like outside scrutiny, um, and then getting in over his head. Yes. Um, so yeah, no, I thought that worked. I do think um, the one like problem that that set up plot wise was like so the entire like all of the corruption was because there was no oversight on the uh 
the like Wayne trust that they had set up to like yes. donate money to the city, right? Yes, correct. So Batman learns about that, and instead of being like, "Oh, I'm Bruce Wayne, I can just exert oversight on the, <laughs> the trust," <laughs> he goes, oh, "Better dress up as a bat and uh, punch people until they aren't corrupt anymore." <laughs> like I feel like this is more of a Bruce Wayne uh, problem, problem to solve than a Batman yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah, and they I, just I, don't address that at all. Um, no, 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 no. I think they did towards the end. I think this is. I don't where... remember anything where Bruce Wayne was like, oh, "I'll just take control of this trust." Um. Okay. So that that's true. true. Um. I think I want to see how the sequel does it. I think. He, um, Batman makes, uh, like, it was kind of cool to see Batman, I, I appreciate the filmmakers doing narration for Batman, mm-hmm. like he wrote General, like, I really like that, and to get into more the head of Batman as a character, and he, he, you know, there's like a bookend towards the end, where he say, like, and the city needs hope, and like, he realized that the city has scars, and like, he's, it's just like him, you know, like, he's not alone, uh, with the pain and the, and and vengeful um, experience that he's having, and so like he he says that outright, and then I think at that moment I think he will realize that they need Bruce Wayne, like they need Bruce Wayne to help the city. So hopefully the sequel will do the the thing that I'm hoping is like okay we're gonna get the traditional Bruce Wayne persona because. You know, Robert Pattinson's version of Bruce Wayne understands now, like, he needs to be at the public now. He cannot be always Batman to, you know, the chief, the, you know, the, you know, the change of Gotham, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, it's just, you know, we don't spend time with the Bruce Wayne persona because it's, it's making a point that Bruce needs to understand that he cannot be Batman every time. Like, the, he also mentioned that in the beginning. He's like, this way I cannot be everywhere, you know, like people has this superstition. He's there, you know, mm-hmm. which is cool. And the, the opening where the guy thinks like in that open door, uh, the bank, he thinks he's there because in the shadows, you know? <laughs> so I, I think we're leaning towards that to that character. And so, so he will do something with the trust or, you know, la- layer in the sequels, you know, it's just mm-hmm. n- not now in this movie because it's just he's discovering this whole thing about his family, you know, and so, yeah. So, um, I disagree because I think that will happen in the sequels. It's just it's not happening in this film yet, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and it was kind of cool. Uh, they they foreshadow Hush. Um, that was cool. Uh, right away when they say it was Elliot uh, Thomas Elliot or Elliot Thomas. Uh, oh my God, I, I can't remember that. The character's name, uh, uh, yeah, like it was something like that. Thomas, no, because Thomas Elliot is the main hush. His father, Elliot, something, um, was referenced, and then they put the word hush. I was like, oh my god, they referencing hush. Uh, that was cool to set up a potential villain, mm-hmm. um, you know, for the sequel. Um, but yeah, l- let's get into the other characters, like uh, the penguin. Let's talk mm-hmm. about penguin. He was my favorite. So I, <laughs> oh my god, Carl Carl is amazing. He was a great actor. I love him in every movie. And I, I, do you know he was the penguin when you saw the first teaser? Um, uh, yeah, I had heard about the casting, so I knew. Okay, but um, oh man, that uh. That prosthetics job is incredible. I know. And he looks like the penguin. That's yeah, like <laughs> he really does. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so freaky and like <laughs> um but, but it, he he's so funny in this film. I love him. Like when he when he meets Batman the first time, which is great. It's straight from the comics. And, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm so happy they have the iceberg lunch in this film. Mm-hmm. Finally, in a Batman film, uh, and then he's like, oh, "Take it easy, sweetheart." And then, and then he makes like a joke um, about you know uh, the mayor's death and you know all that. And he say it was too soon. I think he say right. Mm-hmm. 
that was so funny. That was the part where, he, like, oh yeah, he's gonna be great as Penguin. Um, yeah. Um, I love he walks wobbly like a penguin. Like, yeah. Do you notice that? <laughs> mm-hmm. I oh, I was so like, oh my god, they're committed to this. This is great. And then I love the part where he corrects Commissioner Gordon, or uh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Gordon, and and Batman on um, was it the Spanish word? Did mm-hmm. did they got confused? And I love the pink one got it right. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite moment. And then him tying up was so so funny. <laughs> Uh yeah, so Penguin was amazing. I'm so excited for his HBO show, which is great. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, and then it got me kind of past like not seeing his umbrella, like trick umbrellas he usually has in the comics. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he had one umbrella in the Furio, which was, was funny. Uh, but anyway, um, but yeah, so Penguin was great. Uh, I love him. Um, and then we get to Catwoman. Um, I think, um. Zoe Kravitz was really great too. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's definitely the most comic accurate version of Catwoman. Finally, after you know, we got a little bit with Anne Hathaway in Dark Knight Rises, but mm-hmm. but she was comic accurate because of the long Halloween and all that. Um, I think she was great in this film, and one of my favorite Batman and Catwoman on screen performance after you know Michelle Pfeiffer and Keaton, as always. So, what do you think about Catwoman here? Yeah, I thought she was really good. Um, uh, she, her like relationship with uh, Falcone was really interesting. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, know, I felt her like romance with Batman felt a little uh, forced. Oh, some. really? Yeah, at least like it felt like it happened too soon. Hmm. Okay. It was like. Her girlfriend just gotten murdered. <laughs> oh, oh well, I mean, yeah, that's that's true. Um, uh, well, no, I I like that Batman, like the the classic thing. He like just doesn't pay attention to her, like as a human yeah, person. No, I, it, it definitely felt like yeah. I, um, I felt like his reaction made sense, but her kissing him didn't make sense unless yeah. she was like like using him. But then they didn't really like, yeah, explicitly um, say that that was happening at any point. No. So I was just kind of like, I don't know, it felt kind of rushed. But yeah, um, I mean they're young. I mean I get I, I, mean, I, mean, I, I mean yeah I it's it's kind of weird. Was just murdered. <laughs> I mean I, I I don't I it's it's I I think she's very emotional. So she's seeing this bizarre man dressing like a bat and so okay. I, I, I mean she's she's a cat burglar so I don't know I I mean it's 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 a weird relationship honestly yeah. And, yeah. so um much weirder than Michelle Pfeiffer and Keaton's and Batman Returns anyway mm-hmm. um yeah um yeah that could have been like there's a lot of flying and you mentioned that now and I was like Ugh. Um, but I I think she's just very like she's being very emotional in this whole film, and in a good way. Mm-hmm. And so so she just you know, I mean well, also Batman was dropping in. Let me say that. So he was dropping in her business. So that was his fault. And so yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, that's that's intriguing. Um, I didn't feel it was forced. I I mean it was natural and you know um it was just catwoman yeah. versus I think, batman you know? i think i would have bought it if it like came a little later in the movie mm. yeah i i agree i agree um yeah um man i when when did he first kiss i i'm trying i'm, I'm like, pretty I sure know. it was like around the time they found the body okay, okay, okay. yeah it was maybe up the backs, the bat, yeah, they kiss in the bat symbol, right? Because she was calling yeah. him, and yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, um, man, it's been two weeks. I, I, I'm trying to remember where, where it happened. Uh, the kissing part with Batman and uh, Catwoman, oh. so, um, but yes, uh, that was totally hilarious. Um, oh, then what else? Oh, uh, 
you mentioned Falcon. Um, what do you think about uh, John Turturro's performance? I think it was really great. I think he yeah. was the best Frank Holm we got in so far. Ew. Yeah, he was really good. Mm. Um, yeah, perfect, like, kind of like slimy mob guy. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, his glasses. Uh, yeah, cool. yeah, that was good. Good, uh, yeah. like, character design. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. By the way, production design is amazing in this film. Yes. Uh, and just like the cinematography, this is the yes. most like beautiful superhero movie I th- I think I've seen. Yeah, in a like, while. Yes. Oh my god. I I mean I love the red lights. Mm-hmm. Like when he does the flare and towards the end, like that was a really great shot. Mm-hmm. Um. And and then like the rain just really helps the film to feel moody and like just gives Gotham that dirty and like gothic look mm-hmm. that you always associate with the city, which is great. Um, I I, I hope um the the similar um uh, photographer um Gray Fisher gets to win the Dune um award because I think he's been great. Like I love Row One. I think that look. Is really great, mm-hmm. and and this film especially, I, I think he should win in the Oscars for the cinematography. I just I think he has done a really great job of just giving you know films a way better like just look and not feel generic like blue screen, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and I appreciate everything feels like it's real. I love the Batmobile. Let's like like probably my third or second favorite. I love the bat suit. Um, let's get into that. Like, uh, did you like the bat suit? Yeah, um, I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I love the bat suit being every comic book inspiration. So, um, but yeah, I um I uh what else that was good um uh, the score let's talk about that um i i think the score was great it was very memorable compared to other superhero scores uh, this this is by michael chiquino right yeah um, same guy that did uh spider-man and dr strange yeah weirdly <laughs> yeah uh, yeah uh so he's gonna be now more famous after the batman <laughs> mm-hmm. um which is weird uh um, it'd be funny he did a Hulk film, and then that will like connect every Batman composer because Stanley Elfman did the Hulk anyway. Um, uh, but yeah, it was really great. Uh, but yeah, this film looks awesome. One of the best looking Batman films since what the Burton and Joe Schumacher films, because the because the Ben Affleck and Dark Knight trilogy went more of like realistic looking cities. Mm-hmm. Um, which I didn't like, I, I will personally say. Yeah, no, I liked how, um, I, I don't know, I liked the aesthetic of Gotham in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the, like, really dark, but still, like, modern, like, with all the screens in that one place that's supposed to be, like, analogous to Times Square. Yeah. Yeah. It was really weird watching the movie, <laughs> seeing things that were like almost something from New York. New York, yeah. 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 I was- yeah, that was true. <laughs> like, oh man, like like when you enter the city, like it does feel like New York. Um Yeah. I it's mean, like Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, just like slightly off. It was weird. Like when they went to the uh where was the mayor's uh, funeral? Uh, it was the, supposed to be City Hall. I yes, it was in yeah. City Hall. I remember. And then it was, it was like, that's that's Penn Station. But oh, really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it did, like the building itself looked so much like Penn Station. Yeah. Um, oh my God, it's funny. They shot this. Like in Chicago and Glass, or in one of the European countries, Glasswood, I think it's called, or uh, something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, the locations are 
so inspiring New York. Like, but I, I also like the it feels like the Arkham Games designs. Mm-hmm. So, which is great. Um, but yeah, um, it reminds me like like uh, the Seven film with David Fincher. It mm. reminded me of that, like the city's like architecture and just overall look. I feel like so. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. The overall, the production design and score and just the overall take on Gotham City and Batman. It's so spot on, which I love. So, so I'm very excited for the sequels to like improve upon those designs, you know. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, what, what is there other characters we have to mention? Um, before we kind of discuss who's going to be the next villain, um, because uh, do you think um, the Arkham inmate? That was played by the, one of the Eternals actors, uh, Druk. Uh, is that the Joker? Um, yeah, I thought that was what they were okay. going for. I thought they'd confirmed that somewhere. I mean, they, they've been very, like, conf- like, I don't know, like, like conflicted. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, last thoughts on the Batman, like. Uh, do you want another Joker film with him? I um, yeah, I think I do. Oh, really? Okay. Like, yeah, I like. I know it's going to be hard because everyone's going to be comparing it to um, Heath Ledger. Yeah, I don't know. At least we had like the palate cleanser of like everyone can agree that Leto was bad, <laughs> uh, and we can just move on from that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. No, okay. I, I, the Joker is just such an interesting character, like a such a good villain. Um, okay. That yeah, I think they could do it, and I think they'd be able to do it really well, given um, how they did the Riddler in this movie. Yeah. Um. And, and another thing, I I like if we're gonna have yet yeah, another Joker. I I did like we're gonna maybe have a team up with him and the yes. Riddler. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's always fun when Batman villains team up. Yes, true. Because we still do that every movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, except with you know the this film, I mean, it's just one villain. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, because uh, with the Riddler and Joker, like they usually don't team up. So it's kind of interesting that this film like series are going to do that, and that's mm-hmm. like kind of cool to see. Um. But yeah, and it's Barry uh, Kino, right? The actor's name who's playing that like unnamed Arkham inmate that is the Joker, right? Like, is he gonna be the new Joker? Like, I, I think he is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, I, 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 I you know, I, cause like he's in the Marvel movies, and uh, yeah, but, but, I, there's I'm, nothing saying. Like, I mean, so is Andy Circus. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, true. There's, there's nothing saying that you can't be in both. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. Uh, Jeffrey I mean, Wright's in both. Oh yeah, he's he's the Watcher. <laughs> yeah. What if still? So, um, like the animosity between DC and Marvel is really just like a fun thing. Like certain sections of the fan base, it's not actually there at the corporate level. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Um, I mean the. Um, who is it? The the actor that played uh, Polka Dot Man in the Suicide Squad? Oh yeah, David. Uh, David, like uh, something. I, um, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Yeah, this it's a weird last name. Um, he he's in. He, he's in everything. Yeah, like he's in everything. Yeah. Like, so like it's not a big deal. Like I, it's weird. Like he speaking of him, he's in the Dark Knight, and and yeah. 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 Oh, you knew. You knew. Okay. Cause yeah, and he's yeah, he's in Suicide Squad. He's in Ant Man. He was sure. in that. He, I think he played the Riddler in uh the Long Halloween uh, animated he, movie. He was in um he played the Calendar Man. Oh, the Calendar Man. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And then in um the TV show The Flash, he right. played uh Abra Kadaba. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, so he's, he's in all of the stuff. Yeah, all of the multiverses. Yes, <laughs> he connects. He he he's connecting the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh boy. Uh, yeah. So okay, because I, I don't know. Like sometimes you want to make a big name for the Joker, but I don't know. So. Yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be better if it's like a more well, no. up and coming actor than a okay a big name. Yeah. Um. It's just his makeup was weird when we I I saw it. Yeah, I mean, it was like you only saw it through the glass of the prison cell, but yeah. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like everyone knows that you can, you have to put the Joker in it. So, like, I, I kind of question why we have to hide it, you know? Yeah. It's just, I don't know. Um, like, I mean, I guess if they put the green hair, then like it could easily confirm that was the Joker, you know? Mm-hmm. But anyway, anyway, I mean, it's just me. I, um, nothing will be. Batman Begins, where you just give the, the the Joker calling card, and that was that was a great tease. So, yeah, um, but yeah, so overall, great Batman film. Yeah, one of the best. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, well, uh, Will, thank you for joining me today for this awesome podcasting. Yeah. Sunday. Thanks for having me. Um, hope you feel better. Reologies. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Um. Maybe there's some bat medicine that can help you. Um, <laughs> huh, huh, get what I did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, yeah, just take um, uh, uh, what's the algae pill? Um, septic. Uh, that's what you call it. Uh, thank you, mom. That like take that, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think yeah, you I'll, should be good. Take something. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Or you can do something that I do, but I I don't do. Uh. Uh. Now you know mm-hmm. rubbing alcohol. Like yeah, three. don't do that. Yeah. Definitely do not do that. <laughs> so uh, I just just phoning out there for you, buddy. If you're no. that desperate That's to get your allergies really out, of the bad way. for you. I, no, I'm my, I I actually talked to a friend who works in the health inspection. Uh, the the way we call it the health uh, center, and he told me that rubbing alcohol can cure your allergies. He told me no. That's- no, no. Oh, it's true. He told me that. He he experimented on someone that I cannot tell you and his name. So yeah, that's what happened. Um, but he also told me the bat. You know the the uh, the little Caesar pizza. There's the bat croissant. He told me you can eat that and you can cure your allergies. Okay. All right. Anyway, sounds very fake. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um. <laughs> I love your, I love your love post. <laughs> and anyway, I'm 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 just I'm I'm just now making jokes now. Okay, uh, any more discussion of the Batman? Will anything else before we just just go to our, our separate ways now? <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I think I'm good. I'm it, excited for uh, if and when they make sequels and for the yes. uh, the Penguin spinoff yeah which i'm excited for yeah yeah so that's very good um but but thank you again will um uh for coming for this uh yeah thank you casual sunday i guess <laughs> so anyway um uh, what, what do you want to do for next week for marvel because we we still have one more week for moon Knight. Uh, do you want to do another ranking for marvel plus or where you want to go uh, next yeah, week? Uh, it's up to you okay uh Oh, you want to do another ranking? Um, sure, yeah. Um, you want to do on a uh, villains for Rose Gallery, like Spider-Man, or where, where you want to go? Okay, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, Spider-Man uh, villains, or you want to do it for film villains, where you want to go? Uh, let's do film villains. Film villains, okay. All right, we can do that. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining this podcast on the Batman. So, me and Will, we got... We'll be back for next week for another Marvel Plus talk. Have a good weekend, you guys.